I'm going to show you the one technique that improved my animation the most once I understood its potential. This video is a tiny standalone section from my advanced animation course that I've just released called Master Motion Design. In this course, I've packaged everything I know about improving your motion design skills to tell better stories and work more efficiently in After Effects. To celebrate the launch, if you enroll before the end of September, I'm giving away a load of one-time only bonuses that include personal feedback from motion gurus that I've enlisted to help, three of the best in the industry, Evan Abrams, Jake Bartlett, and Moni LaRusa. I'm also giving away one enrollment with all of the bonuses to one lucky subscriber. I'll share details on how to enter later in the video. If you want to know more about the course, visit my website, there's a link in the description, or watch the live stream that I just did answering all of your questions. On with the video. Okay, so understanding this skill was what really allowed me to take my motion design to the next level when I was struggling on a plateau, and that skill is anticipation. Anticipation is one of the 12 principles of animation. Now the 12 principles are a set of ideas or rules for good animation laid out in this book, The Illusion of Life by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, who were key animators at Disney during its rise in the early 20th century with movies like Snow White and Pinocchio. And these principles are what the Disney animation team discovered would lead to the most realistic and engaging animation. At this point, no one had really done animation like that before. So they had to figure out all this stuff from scratch. At first, I kind of dismissed them because when I first discovered them, I wasn't doing cell animated characters and figured they weren't really relevant to moving keyframes around in After Effects, but I was wrong. And the most important I think is anticipation. Now I've got some examples in here for all of the 12 principles of animation, and we will get to cover all of these later at the end of this lesson. Anticipation is essentially a smaller motion that precedes a larger motion. Here our square is moving from left to right, but first it makes a little move to the left. And in doing that, it's leading us to expect the movement to the right by building up that energy. Almost all motion in nature is preceded by a moment of anticipation. Imagine if you were to throw a ball, you wouldn't just have the ball in your hand, move your hand forward and then release it. You'd look a bit like a robot doing that. You would wind your hand back, moving it maybe behind your head and then throw it forward. And the more you drew your arm back at the start, the further you're going to throw it. You're starting by moving in the opposite direction. Anticipation really adds context to the motion. It tells the audience how much energy and how much effort went into that. We can just know that if we had a little motion in the opposite direction before our main motion, it looks much more natural. And most of the time, more interesting motion leads to more engaging scenes. In our square example, this is about as removed from reality as we can get. There's no reason why a square moving across the screen would need to build up energy and prepare for a motion. And it's just a square living in an abstract world in this sort of crimson void. If it needs to get from here to here, we can just have it move straight there as logically as possible from A to B. And there are many times where just animating between two positions really simply might be the best way to do it. If you were animating some element of machinery that's super precise, that would be a good example. But most of the time, the purpose of our animation is to entertain. Even if we're making an explainer that's meant to educate, if our client just wanted to educate someone, their company would have sent out a Word document and more than likely no one would read it. The fundamental reason why animation is used the majority of the time is that companies need an audience to be engaged, become entertained with the content so that they actually absorb the information, even if that's really dry, boring company financial statistics. That's why the book these principles are from is called The Illusion of Life. They were trying to make pencil and ink drawings feel like real characters to the audience, creating life where there was none. And this might be why some artists and animators develop god complexes, but we're not really here to discuss that. But those small changes can lead to really interesting results. If we can make our square move in a realistic way, our audience is more engaged. They're happier to watch it. They'll be more likely to buy the client's products. The clients are happier and therefore we can increase our rates and we're happier. And we're likely going to enjoy the process more and be prouder with our work. So that's why we're making something look natural in the first place. The anticipation of your motion in a lot of cases is way more important than the actual motion between the two points. And I'm gonna show you just how powerful it can be with an extreme example. In the second square that we've got here, let me turn off our first one so we can concentrate on this. I'm just gonna use three frames. Now these three frames are hold keyframes, so there will be no motion in between them. It's just going to snap between the points. Now the first keyframe is the start position and the end one is the end position. So really we've got one frame in the middle to communicate the motion between these two points. And where do we put that position here to communicate the motion from left to right? We put it slightly left to the starting position. Now surely that won't communicate the motion from left to right. 
but let's take a look. Now these two positions are four frames apart, so it's playing back at essentially six frames a second at its fastest point. But in just three frames, we were able to communicate a believable motion. But we're communicating more nuance in that motion. There's tension. We can feel it drawing back almost as if being shot like a slingshot. It's interesting to look at. And in just three frames, if we were to take this middle keyframe and put that somewhere between the left and the right position, how boring does that look? If we move it back, we can see it is much more interesting. It's got anticipation and it looks natural. And I want to show this example because I really like using limited keyframes and poses, especially when you start to build your animation. Because if you can make your scene work with just a few frames and just a limited amount of animation, if you can make that work, you're set. Everything else is just icing on the cake. And we're going to explain that more in detail in the next lessons. To me, this is similar to how our work can be really engaging when they use as minimal brushstrokes as possible. Anticipation is also a really great tool to direct our audience's attention. By moving one element, we can draw our viewer's eyes right to where we want it. And this is called eye tracing. And it's an important thing to keep in mind because it's better if we're controlling where the viewer is looking. And that's something you should always be aware of. That way we have a firmer grasp on the pace and the flow of the animation and ultimately the experience of the viewer. So in this example, we've got lots of squares. If you're watching this, you don't know exactly where to look. Now, one of these squares is going to move. See if you can spot it. Okay, so as soon as something moves, in this case, our square over here, we look at that moving area. Now, there's no anticipation, so unless your eyes were on this specific point or near this area, you wouldn't expect that motion, and you might miss the start of it. I'm going to show that animation, but this time with a bit of anticipation, and it's on a different square, so try to think about what your eyes are doing when you watch this one. So now we have this square moving with a little bit of anticipation. And with that anticipation added, our eyes are immediately drawn to that and we get to experience that full motion of it rotating. We're not darting our eyes around to try to figure out what's going on. And the animator here, it's me, is directing you, telling you exactly where I want your eyes to be. We've got their attention. Anticipation is a signal, something that says, hey, look over here, something is about to happen and you don't want to miss out on it. And this doesn't have to be tricky. You don't have to spend all day in the graph editor trying to make this look good. Let's have a look at what the motion curve looks like in the graph editor for this motion. For our main rotation, we're just easing out of this position and easing into the final position. And then at the start, we're just easing in to a rotation slightly to the left as well. Nothing too fancy here. So how do we go about adding anticipation? On this square's position, we've got two keyframes. It's start and it's end point. And we've got the rough time we want to take it to get there. And because we're only moving on one axis, the X axis horizontally, we can separate the dimensions. So if we right click position and click separate dimensions, and we can delete the keyframes on the Y position property. And doing this is just gonna make this a lot easier to see and work within the graph editor. Now let's select these keyframes and it's easing with F9, just so it's a little bit smoother. And we have something to start within the graph editor. Typically what I do is select the first keyframe, copy it, and then paste it a little bit earlier. And then on that second keyframe, just nudge it in the opposite direction. If we play that back, we've got a bit of anticipation. Now we can go into the graph editor and really smooth it out. We can extend these handles so the easing is a bit more severe and a bit more noticeable. There, that's looking much better. And I'm in the value graph editor because, well, really it's my favorite and you can change the speed graph editor down here. And to me, the reason I love the value graph editor so much is that it's just way more intuitive, for me at least. It's easier for me to imagine the motion going in one direction and then the other, like this line is, rather than in the speed graph where it only shows the speed. If we just look at the speed graph, we have no indication of which direction our shape is moving, or really any indication at all of how the value is changing in this property. We just know that it's moving very fast at this point. Now, I know some people who prefer the speed graph editor, and that might very well be you. And both are important to get familiar with because they both have their strengths. But whenever I get the chance, I almost always prefer the value graph editor. And really, the first thing I do when I get into the graph editor is to just smooth things out. And most of the time, unless you want something super snappy in your animation, something like this, you want these curves to be nice and flow into each other. You don't want any sharp angles. Now here, the anticipation, although it moves back a fair bit, is kind of subtle. If you really want to anticipate a move, you can make it hold a lot longer in this position. And we can do that by just increasing the handles a lot here. So it hangs in this state for quite a while before slingshotting into the right position. And you might want to drag this first keyframe back here. So our anticipation is taking almost three times as long as our main motion here. 
but by doing that we can build up the energy a lot more before we go into this main motion. Now our square spends a lot of time hanging in this one position at the left here and that's fine we want it to stay around there for a long time but I think we want a bit more motion during this period and to do that we can just put these handles at an angle. Let me increase the size of this so we can see that a bit clearer. You can see how this area of our graph is very flat but if we just angle these handles bringing this one up a bit and this one down a bit even if our angle is straight it is ever so slightly increasing. So that way we keep everything in motion even as it's building up that energy at this extreme position. It's not just hanging in space when we get to its, you know, extreme anticipation position. And sometimes to add anticipation, you don't even need to add a new keyframe. You can just do that with two. So let's get rid of this first keyframe and straighten out this handle. So now we're just moving from left to right. But if we move this handle up, it's going to make a tiny motion to the left as well. And here it is really quick. It is just a little bump. And sometimes that's all you need. The reason why I would often do it with an extra keyframe is that because if we look at this motion in the graph editor, we don't ease into this first motion here. There is a sudden acceleration. And because this is just a few frames, you don't really notice that. So the smaller and faster the motion, the more you can get away with adding some anticipation just on a few keyframes. Now for the giveaway details. I'm giving away one enrollment with all of the bonuses to enter simply like the video and comment below with what you're most excited to learn in the course. The winner will be announced on September 21st. Good luck. You also don't have to add anticipation on the same property that your main motion is in. That is often the most obvious place to add it and it works most of the time, but we can spice it up a bit by adding it to other properties. Here we've got the same motion going from left to right, but the anticipation isn't on the position, it is on the rotation. So there's a bit of rotation, but importantly, it is rotating in the opposite direction. It is building up energy by moving in the opposite direction. And then as it starts to move across, we ease out of that rotation and we ease into the position animation. On the second example, we're animating the shape's path. So the shape is deforming with some anticipation and the anticipation still works. And of course you can use multiple properties. You can use position and rotation and a path animation if you want as well. And in this last example, you can even anticipate with scale and it still all works. Now, all of these animations look pretty smooth and that's not because of anything special in the graph editor or they have a high frame rate. It's because of the way the anticipation leads into the main motion. When we pick up that motion purely moving from left to right, that motion isn't coming from anywhere. It's got a bit of a running start. It's been warmed up so our eyes and brain are prepared for what's about to happen. If you're interested in learning more skills and methods to get the most out of your motion, Master Motion Design is open for enrollment. Thanks for watching.